17 mistakes we make in the stock market and lose everything. Number 1 following recommendations blindly. When buying shares, inexperienced investors tend to follow any recommendations by the stock exchange professionals. But an old exchange saying goes, if the sparrows are already whistling it from the roofs, then the stock is already too expensive. In other words, if the next big thing is already in the newspaper, it is no longer an insider tip. Just think of the dot com bubble, current blockchain bubble. Although the technology is behind these are groundbreaking, but private investors have lost a lot of money. Investors who recognized their potential early on and put their faith in them in the initial phases made big money. It means that the insider tips are to be treated with extreme caution. Mistake number 2 Short Term Trading A study by economic professors Andreas Hackethalan and Stephen Mayer for the magazine Finance Test concludes that the private investors missed out on the big stock market profits between 2005 to 2015. The study examined the stock portfolio of 40,000 direct bank customers. At an average return of 3.1%, these investors were well below the market's annual growth rate of 8.7%. The reason for this was less lack of stock market knowledge than short-term trading and blind actions. Private investors often lack the calmness to hold on their company shares even in the event of a falling share price. At the same time, they tend to sell too early in the event of rising share price. In both cases, they miss valuable opportunities. Instead, investors should pursue a medium to long term investment strategy and maintain it even in the event of short term market turbulence. Number 3 Not Diversifying Risks Diversifying risk is the foundation for success in the purchase of sales. For private investors this means diversification beats concentration, meaning that the risk in a portfolio is mitigated when investing in stocks from various industries. Nonetheless, many private investors do not follow the basic rule enough because they have too many individual shares in their portfolios. The survey had shown that direct bank customers have an average of only 12 individual shares in their portfolios. Too few to avoid bulk risks. Exchange traded funds or ETFs can be a useful means to spread portfolio risk more broadly. Number 4. Buying shares on credit. Buying shares on credit is a strategy used by professionals in the stock market. They borrow money for a share purchase from a bank or a broker. After the share price has increased, they sell it again and take care of the debts and cash the difference as profit. But if the share price doesn't increase and falls instead, the bank and broker expects them to pay more money. This so-called margin call can lead to a high losses that far exceed the initial investment. Some small investors take loans from their family and friends instead of bank loans when buying shares. If the investment is unsuccessful, then broken friendships and broken families are left. This is why private investors should always stay away from equity trading on credit. Number 5. The Basic Knowledge Certain basic knowledge is essential before the purchase of stocks. One of the most common mistakes is to simply start exchanging without any prior knowledge. But the investor who lacks the basic knowledge runs the risk of losing a lot of money on the stock market. Inexperienced investors tend to pay exaggerated prices for stocks because they don't know the most important key figures or buy and sell shares at the wrong point of time. Therefore, beginners need to an introduction into the world of the stock market before making a purchase. Ask yourself these questions. How does the stock market work? How does the share price develop? What is a broker? What is a dividend? Knowledge of the stock exchange also includes basic knowledge of finance. Number 6 Not Setting Stock Prices Although shares buyers have to demonstrate patience and nerve, even when the share price falls, they do not have to accept losses without action. You should first define a lower pain threshold at which you are no longer willing to hold a stock. Stock buyers set so-called stock prices in their stock portfolio for this purpose. If the price falls below a previously fixed price, the shares will be sold if the broker finds a buyer. This enables investors to protect themselves against drastic drops in price. Stop prices should always be kept in mind. If the share price increases in value, the stop price should also be shifted upwards. Number 7 Trading without a strategy As an investor, you should never let your emotions guide you when buying shares. The average investor changes about a quarter of his stock portfolio in the span of one year. The overzealous change in their entire stock portfolio twice a year and thus achieve the lowest return on the share purchase. Trading cost for brokers alone reduce income by 1%. In the case of particularly active investors, the trading cost of brokers even reduce returns up to 3%. In order to avoid becoming a slave of your emotions, you absolutely need a strategy.
strategy. There are two basic investment strategies for buying stocks. Value investing and diversification. Investors should develop a personal strategy that takes into account their risk preference and their preferred investment preference. Number 8. Falling in love with a company. Too often when we see a company we have invested in do well. It's easy to fall in love with it and forget that we bought the stocks as an investment. Always remember you buy this stock to make money. Number 9. Lack of patience. A slow and steady approach to portfolio growth will give you the greater returns in the long run. Expecting a portfolio to do something other than what it is designed to do is a recipe for disaster. This means you need to keep your expectations realistic with regard to the timeline for portfolio growth and returns. Number 10 Too much investment turnover. Turnover or jumping in and out of positions is another return killer. Unless you are an institutional investor with the benefit of low commissions rate, then the transaction cost can eat you alive. Not to mention the short term tax rates and the opportunity cost of missing out on the long term gains of other sensible investments. Number 11 Not understanding the investment. One of the world's most successful investors, Warren Buffett, warns against investing in companies whose business models you don't understand. The best way to avoid this is to build a diversified portfolio of exchange traded funds or mutual funds. If you do invest in individual stocks, make sure you thoroughly understand each company whose stocks represent before you invest. Number 12. Attempting to time the market. Trying to time the market also kills returns. Successfully timing the market is extremely difficult. Even institutional investors often fail to do it successfully. A well-known study, Determinants of the Portfolio Performance, a financial analyst journal 1986 conducted by Gary P. Brinson. This study showed that 94% of the investors cannot time the market. It also explains most of the portfolio's return can be explained by the asset allocation decisions you make, not by timing and even security selection. Number 13. Waiting to get even. Getting even is just another way to ensure you lose any profit you might have accumulated. It means that you are waiting to sell a loser until it gets back to its original cost basis. By failing to realize a loss, investors are actually losing in two ways. First, they avoid selling a loser which may continue to slide until it's worthless. Second, there is the opportunity cost of the better use of those investment. 14. Letting your emotions rule. Perhaps the number one killer of the investment return is emotion. Investors should not let fear and greed control their decisions. Instead, they should focus on the bigger picture. Stock market returns may deviate widely over a shorter time frame. But over the long term, historical returns for the large cap stocks can average 10%. Number 15. Investing money you will need soon. Jumping into the markets before building a strong financial foundation is the biggest mistake investors make. A big part of that is building a cash reserve so you don't need to rely on your investments when you run out an emergency or want to make a certain purchase. A good way to know if you are ready to invest is understanding if you have a healthy amount of cash in savings account set aside for all your near term goals. Number 16 Short Term Focus The idea that investing in financial assets or trading in equity can make you get rich quickly can limit your focus to the near future. This stops you from thinking about the long term effect of your investment decisions and that that could be extremely damaging to your financial future. To make profits in a short period, many first time investors make rash and uninformed decisions and these are more likely to result in losses. Last but not the least, number 17, constantly watching the markets. Of all the mistakes we heard, this one came up the most. While it's normal to keep an eye on what's happening in the overall economy, it's easy to get swept up in the excitement. The markets are constantly moving and trying to follow along in real time can lead you to continuously checking and changing your investments when you are better off leaving them for long term. Watching negative performance without context can lead to a rash decision making, while positive performance can be overconfidence. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next video.